Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher C, and welcome to this audio summary of the anal and urogenital triangles. We're going to cover the boundaries, their contents, and the key features of both male and female external genitalia. We'll also cover the layers of the penis and the scrotum. Let's start at the back with the anal triangle. The posterior boundary is the coccyx, and from here, the sacrotuberous ligaments run from the sacrum to the ischial tuberosities. A line between the ischial tuberosities forms the anterior boundary. The contents are the anal aperture, which is the opening of the anal canal. We also have the external anal sphincter muscle, which is skeletal muscle. In the middle, we have the anal coccygeal ligament running from the coccyx to the anus. Finally, on both sides, we have the ischioanal fossa, and these are pyramidal spaces bounded by levator ani and obturator internus. They're filled with fat and therefore allow the expansion of the anal canal during defecation. Importantly, in this area, we can find emerging from the pudendal canal two structures. Firstly, the inferior pudendal artery, and secondly, the pudendal nerve which has its three branches, the inferior rectal, the perineal, and the dorsal nerve of the penis or clitoris. The urogenital triangle is bounded anteriorly by the pubic symphysis and laterally by the two ischiopubic rami. Posteriorly, there's a line between the two ischial tuberosities. The urogenital triangles for male and female are rather different, but there are three common sets of muscles on the exterior surface of both. The first, running in the midline, is the bulbospongiosis muscle. Lateral to the midline, there are two ischiocavernosus muscles. And finally, from one lateral side to the other is the superficial transverse perinei muscles. Centrally, you'll find a fibromuscular mass, the perineal body, and that's for muscular attachment. The ischiocavernosus muscle covers lateral erectile tissue. Those are the two crura, whereas the bulbospongiosus muscle covers either the central bulb of the penis or the bulb of the vestibule in females. Not seen externally, but worth mentioning, is the deep transverse perinei muscles, also running along the midline and attaching to the perineal body. This is more involved in the perineal pouches than the external triangles. Let's talk about features of the female external genitalia. Firstly, there are two labia majora. These are hair-bearing skin folds, and in the center, they fuse to form the mons pubis, which is found anterior to the pubic symphysis. The hairless labia minora are folds which are medial to, and therefore within, the labia majora. Now, the labia minora also splits anteriorly to form a hood the prepuce, and this is for the clitoris, which is a mound of erectile tissue formed from the corpora cavernosa. And finally, there's also an anchor, which is the frenulum. Within the labia minora, you can find the vestibule. This is an opening that contains both the openings to the vagina and the urethra. And on both sides of this opening, you can find Bartholin's glands. Let's move on to the male, starting with the penis. The erectile tissue we've seen before, the crura, form the corpora cavernosa, which run in the penis and is separated by a septum. Centrally, we have the corpus spongiosum, and this is from the bulb and contains the urethra. We divide the penis into three parts. The root, which is not visible externally, is made of the crura and the bulb, and the muscles fixed to the perineal membrane, as well as the ischiopubic rami. The body of the penis is the free part and contains both the corpora cavernosa and the corpus spongiosum. Finally, we have the glands, which is a distal expansion of the corpus spongiosum. This forms a cone shape with the urethral orifice. There are two ligaments connecting the penis to the pubic symphysis. The first of which is the suspensory ligament of the penis, which is a condensation of deep fascia connecting the erectile bodies of the penis to the pubic symphysis. The fundiform ligament is actually from the linear alba of the abdomen, and it tracks down to surround the penis and provides a sling-like attachment to the pubic symphysis. 
Cutting through the penis, you'll encounter the following layers from external to internal. Skin, superficial fascia of the penis, deep fascia of the penis, bux fascia, the tunica albuginea, and then the corpora cavernosa or corpus spongiosum. Finally, around the testis, the layers of the scrotum. From external to internal, they are the skin, the dartos muscle, the external spermatic fascia, cremaster muscle, internal spermatic fascia, the tunica vaginalis, and finally, the tunica albuginea. You may find it helpful to use the mnemonic, some dangerous Englishman called it the testis. That's all, thank you, and see you next time. Mm -hmm.